section 4.5 is graphing rational functions, so it's taking everything that we've learned and putting it together to be able to graph these. So we're given this function here, x minus 1 over x squared plus 4. Whenever you're graphing a rational function, the very first thing you need to do is completely factor the numerator and the denominator. So go ahead and pause this and factor this as much as possible. So the numerator doesn't factor, the denominator factors into x plus 2, x minus 2. So whenever you're graphing rational functions, there's six pieces of information that you need to find. The first one is domain, whatever makes the denominator zero. So go ahead and find the domain of this function. So the domain is whatever makes the denominator zero, so x cannot equal plus or minus two. The next thing we want to find is x-intercepts. X-intercepts is when y is equal to zero. The only way for a fraction to equal zero is if the numerator equals zero. So the way that the, we find the x-intercepts is we set the numerator equal to zero. So go ahead and find where the numerator is equal to zero. So x minus 1 equals 0, that means that x equals 1, that's your x-intercept. y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. The only thing you have to be careful of is if x cannot equal 0 is part of your domain, then you're not going to have any y-intercepts. In this case, that's not a domain restriction, so go ahead and pause the video and find your y-intercepts. I plugged in 0 every time I saw an x. I plugged it into the non-factored form just because it's a little easier for this one. You get 0 minus 1 over 0 squared minus 4, so a positive 1 fourth is your y-intercept. So now we're getting into the information from 4.4. So vertical asymptotes. Look at your notes from section 4.4, pause the video, and find any vertical asymptotes and any possible holes that this function is going to have. So Vertical asymptotes and holes are what make the denominator zero. Anything that shows up in domain restrictions have to show up as either a vertical asymptote or a hole. Remember, it cannot be both. For this one, vertical asymptotes are whatever makes the denominator zero that don't also make the numerator zero. So if you can cancel the factor, it's a hole. In this case, none of our factors cancel, so we do not have any holes. Both of our factors down here are gonna be vertical asymptotes. So we have two vertical asymptotes, x equals two and x equals negative two, and we do not have any holes. The last one is horizontal or oblique asymptotes. Remember, you can only have one of these, other, unlike the vertical asymptotes and the holes. You have either a horizontal asymptote or a oblique asymptote. So look at your cases from section 4.4 and decide what this is and what your either horizontal or oblique asymptote is. So my numerator is degree one, my denominator is degree two, which means this is a case number one problem. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals zero. So whenever you're graphing rational functions, you wanna find these six pieces of information before you start graphing. Now we can start plotting information. There's nothing really to plot for your domain. Always make sure that whatever is listed here though is listed in your vertical asymptotes in your holes. Make sure that these two do not double up. So now go ahead and plot your x-intercept, your y-intercept, and your vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So we have our x-intercept here at x equals 1, our y-intercept at y equals 1 fourth, our vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2, and our horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So now we need to figure out what's happening everywhere else. In order to do that, sometimes it's kind of obvious, sometimes you need a number line. So on this number line, I put everything that makes the denominator undefined, so my vertical asymptotes, and anything that makes the function zero, so in this case our x-intercept at x equals one. And I'm going to test points on either side in all these sections to decide whether it's going to be above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So if I pick something less than negative two, like negative infinity, negative infinity minus one, if I plug it in right here, negative infinity minus one is a negative. Negative infinity plus two is a negative, and negative infinity minus two is also a negative. So if I have three negatives, that means the entire function is negative in that section. Make sure you follow your asymptote lines, this horizontal asymptote line, and this vertical asymptote line. This next section between negative 2 and 1, I'm going to pick something like 0. If I plug in 0, well I already did that, that's your y-intercept, you already know that's going to be positive because your y-intercept is positive. It always has to go through the points that you know 
and we know that one's already there. So this next section between one and two, go ahead and pause the video and figure out whether that's gonna be positive or negative, and that last section to the right of x equals two. So between one and two, I picked one and a half. One and a half minus one is positive. One and a half plus two is positive. One and a half minus two is negative. So one negative means this section's negative. It's gonna hit this x-intercept and come down. You can cross horizontal asymptotes in the middle of your graph. Horizontal asymptotes only care about really, really, really big numbers of x. However, you can never cross a vertical asymptote. This last section, if you pick a million, everything's going to be positive. Make sure you follow your asymptote lines and don't cross either of them. So the next question is, how can you use this graph to answer the question x minus 1 over x squared minus 4 is less than or equal to 0? Well, that's the same thing as saying where is r of x, or your y coordinates, less than or equal to 0. So look at your graph and try and answer that question. Being less than or equal to zero is the same thing as being below the x-axis. So this first section right here from negative infinity to negative two, that's not in the domain, so make sure you put a parenthesis here. Infinity is always a parenthesis. And then also this section right here, I do want to include zero, so I'm going to start at one with a bracket, and then go all the way up to two with a parenthesis because we never actually ever achieve two. When we're graphing rationals, we always find these six pieces of information and then plot them and then fill in what we know. So now let's try this one, x squared minus one over x. So the first thing again, always to factor completely. So go ahead and pause the video and factor this completely. So the numerator factors into x plus one, x minus one, the denominator does not factor. So now we have our six pieces of information that we need to find to be able to graph this. Go ahead and pause the video and find at least the first three, domain, x-intercept, and y-intercept. So the only thing that makes the denominator zero is x equals zero, so our domain is that x cannot equal zero. X-intercepts, we're actually gonna have two, it's whatever makes the numerator equal to zero, so denominator equals zero, numerator equals zero, so it's x is equal to plus or minus one. Y-intercepts is x is equal to zero, but check out our domain, x cannot equal zero, so that means that we're not gonna have any y-intercepts. So now, our new information, vertical asymptotes, holes, and horizontal or oblique asymptotes. So go ahead and pause the video and find any vertical asymptotes or holes. What makes the denominator zero? So we only have one thing that makes the denominator zero, x equals zero, and it only makes the denominator zero. So that means we're not gonna have any holes. It has to make both zero to be a hole. So our vertical asymptote is x equals zero. Whatever's listed here must be listed in your vertical asymptotes and your holes, and we're good, but it can only be listed once. So now last one, horizontal or oblique asymptotes. Look at your cases and decide which this is and what it is. Go ahead and pause the video. So I noticed that our numerator is a one degree higher than our denominator, so that's case number three, which means we're gonna have an oblique asymptote. So then we have to do polynomial division. What's in the numerator goes inside, what's in the denominator goes outside. So when we divide x squared minus one by x, you just end up with an x. Again, we don't care about the remainder. So our oblique asymptote is y equals x. Make sure on your vertical asymptotes and your horizontal or oblique asymptotes, you always have either x equals or y equals because they're lines. So now what we want to do is we actually want to graph what we know. When you graph this oblique asymptote, you just graph the line y equals x. You just make it dotted instead of solid. So go ahead and pause the video and graph all of this. So now we have our x-intercepts at plus and minus one, we have our vertical asymptote at x equals zero, and we have our oblique asymptote at y equals x. So now we need to figure out which parts they're gonna be in. They cannot be on both parts of the same side of a vertical asymptote. Because I have this point here at x equals one, I know I have to be in this part, which means I know that this side of the function is going to look like this. Make sure you follow your asymptotes. And then same with this one, I have to go through this x equals negative one, so then I'm just gonna follow my asymptotes. So now we have capital H of x. What I want you to do is you're gonna pause the video, make sure you factor this completely to start, and then find your six pieces of information. So factored completely, this is a two x minus one, it's a little hard to see. 
So domain, what makes the denominator zero? X cannot equal plus or minus two. X-intercept, what makes the numerator equal to zero? So X equals a half or positive two. But wait, you have to check your domain. X equals two is not in the domain, so it can't be an X-intercept. So my only X-intercept is one half. Y-intercept, plug in zero for X, which is easiest to do in standard form. All this goes away, you get two over negative four or negative one half. Vertical asymptote, what makes the denominator zero that does not also make the numerator zero? Notice on this one we have this double factor, x minus two is in the numerator and the denominator. So it can't be a vertical asymptote, the only vertical asymptote is x equals negative two. This positive two is a whole. So I've got x equals two to find the y coordinate, cancel off your x minus two factor, and then plug in two and you end up with a y coordinate of three fourths. Horizontal asymptote, this is a case two problem, our degrees are the same, so it is a horizontal asymptote. Divide the leading coefficients, you get y equals two. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and graph this information to finish this rational function. So you have your x-intercept here at positive one-half, your y-intercept at negative one-half, your vertical asymptote at x equals negative two, and your whole at two and three-fourths, and your horizontal asymptote at y equals two. So here, I know down here it has to go through these points, which means I'm going to follow these points and the asymptotes. The reason I knew it was up here was because I do not have an x-intercept here, which means I can't cross the x-axis, so I have to be above my horizontal asymptote. So make sure when you're graphing rational functions, you factor completely to start, and then find these eight pieces of information, always checking your domain and always checking vertical asymptotes versus holes.